Welcome back to Turf Wars. Um, please let me know if you can hear me and stuff. I hope I've got all the tech set up right again. I haven't done this in a little while, um, so I just want to make sure I've got all my tech stuff set up. I do have a new camera, uh, which is really exciting, so hopefully the picture quality is clearer. I don't have some fuzzy edges from the green screen, though I think I've got some holes. I don't know. I've got some green on my dress. Um, but yeah, welcome back. So for anyone who doesn't know, this is Turf Wars. This is the show where we go through the last week's worth of gender critical, uh, turf, um, transphobic, anti-trans nonsense, and we debunk it together, we laugh at it together, we despair at it together. It, the, <clears throat> the goal is to learn what's going on, getting out of our systems. Um, so usually the show is weekly and up until now it's been on Fridays. Um, things have changed around. I, ha I had to have a bit of a break, um, but hopefully we'll be back. But it's now going to be on Mondays at 9 p.m. UK, if that's OK for everyone. And also uh, it is summer and like I live for the summer, so I've got some holidays coming up. We'll see. But hopefully it's going to be on most Mondays from now onwards. So. Let me know what you think of those changes. Um, so a note going forward, uh, in Turf Wars, I always censor all of the screenshots that we're talking about. So we can't see who's involved unless it's of really big people or really big organisations. And the goal of that is so that we just look at their ideas. The, the point is to look at their arguments and debunk them or laugh them, whatever. It's not to attack the people. And I only leave people uncensored if it's relevant. Or one at the end of today, which might be the funniest one of the whole show, the last one. Um, I'll explain when I get there. And I think it was just necessary to not censor this person for a number of small reasons, which added up. But regardless, all of these people in the show, do not go and find them. Don't harass them. Don't argue with them. Don't waste your time. Um, we're doing that here today between us. So anyway. Oh, and one last thing. Um, oh, I should have put this, the address up. I'll write in the description. I have, by popular demand, <laughs> for some reason, a PO box, which is an address that you can send me stuff to if you would like. And some lovely people, or maybe horrible people, have sent me some nice stuff already. So at the end of the show, I'll just quickly open those things and we can... I don't know what they are. So I've got like five things. But um, so I'll put the address in the description in future if you want to send anything in and maybe once a month or something. If I, if I get enough things, I'll open them on stream and you can see <laughs> what I think of your gifts. <laughs> right. Anyway, let's get on with today's main activities. Um, which button am I pressing? This one. Wicked. Um, so talking about some of the news that we've seen uh, in the last week though maybe some spilled over to the week before so anyone who's wondering why this is episode three and not episode two if you go and look in the playlist on my channel um i actually did an episode on shannon q's channel last week which was fun me and shannon did it together and um i exposed her to some of the madness of gender critical world and it melted her mind a few times which was quite funny i recommend going and watching it but this is episode three anyway um, and it, it, yeah, it was mostly from the last week. But um, here, so here is something. So Marion Miller is related somehow to Four Women Scott, which is a gender critical, um, like anti-trans group from Scotland. <clears throat> and um, she's been charged uh, with a hate crime, according to this article, over allegedly homophobic and transphobic posts on the Internet. And I think there allegedly might be more. I don't really know what this case is doing. Um, I heard that you're not supposed to talk about cases other than what stuff's been in the news because of something. I'm not quite sure. I don't understand it. But all the gender critical seem to be posting the details publicly all over the place uh, or their version of the details. Um, but this this was a, a piece of news and it's... Uh, it got pretty disgusting in places, but I'm not going to go into it too much yet. Perhaps we will when the result comes through. Um, I like this article because it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know, like obviously they put 
homophobic and transphobic posts in quotes because it's like alleged uh, and they don't want to get sued or whatever. But they also put, um, they've written here, um, Miller uh, has been described by friends as upset. <laughs> um, well, I, can, I mean, I can imagine anyone's upset if they get either wrongly charged of a hate crime or if they get caught doing a hate crime. That would make anyone upset, I'm sure. Um, we'll see. We'll see how that pans out. But we will mention some stuff for this later. But that was just that's one incident that happened. Oh, now I'm pressing the wrong button. Um, that's what I'm trying to do. <clears throat> so, Marion Miller has two little gender critical hashtag campaigns going on. One is I stand with Marion Miller because every single person ever who has said anything even like vaguely anti-trans at any point in their life has an I stand with hashtag because that's what the gender criticals do. And she also has this like one uh, which is Women, women won't we shit, we shit, um, which is a Scottish word uh, for like won't shush, won't be quiet, won't shut up. Um, and so there's this hashtag women won't we zit, we shit. I'm sorry, sorry, Scottish people, I don't know how to say it. And also sorry, Scottish people, because reading this post out is going to be really embarrassing. Um, Scottish Twitter like writes in their accent. And if you don't, like, it's, it's hard to read unless you read it out loud in your head, I guess, unless you're Scottish, obviously. Um, but I can't do a Scottish accent. But she says, I didn't stand with Marion Miller. I didn't stand with the women won't wheeze shit clowns. And I'm embarrassed that a boar Scots word is being introduced to the world through bigotry and transphobia. No, I might understand what, no, I, I don't understand what it's like to be trans but they've got a right to exist. So basically this word, wished, wished, I'm so sorry, I should have asked the Scottish person before I did the show. Um, it's like people are seeing this word and wondering what it means and they're being taught it through the lens of this and this lady, this cis woman who has 560 likes um, was annoyed at that. And then hilariously, Marion Miller herself um, has turned up to tell her to shut up whilst having a woman won't shut up hashtag in her <laughs> bio to a woman. So uh, that was embarrassing, an embarrassing cell phone, which is the theme of this week. Embarrassing cell phones, because, you know, I mean, the gender criticals do like to embarrassingly cell phone them. Th this was, I just, like, honestly, what are you doing? Yeah. Come on, <laughs> just look at it. <laughs> just look. <laughs> I, do, I don't know how these people are so unself-aware, but you if you were super self-aware, you wouldn't be gender critical. So this is probably the major news story of the week. Um, Mayor Forstater, who is the lady who JK Rowling come out of her um out of the closet where <laughs> to to reveal her transphobia to the world. This was like what inspired her. Mayor Forstater didn't have a contract renewed a while ago um, and there was a, a court case over it and then the judge found that she basically held views that warranted her being fired and then there was an appeal and there's some really complicated law stuff and they haven't actually appealed her not being renewed. So she now has to have another tribunal to decide whether she was unlawfully fired or, well, not fired, not rehired. Um, and they basically are, have addressed one part of the original ruling. So in the UK, we basically have two like grades of bullshit beliefs. There's things like if you don't think gay people should be able to get married, if you think abortion is murder, if you think that immigrants should get out or something, you know, if you have these like wank views, they're shit, but just for holding them, you can't be fired. If, if you know, if you log on to um, some, you find someone's secret internet profile, someone at your work, and they're posting all this anti-abortion stuff, if they're just saying like abortion is murder or whatever, although they're wrong and not that view is disgusting, you, you're not allowed to fire them for that because people are allowed to hold views. Um, and then there's the next level, which is, so that they're called like protected beliefs. And that's most things. Most things are protected beliefs. 
And then there's like the next level up, which is like beyond disgusting, like Nazi exterminationist um, or calling for extreme violence, um, you know, terrorism, that kind of stuff. And then if you're just discovered to hold those beliefs, it's OK to fire someone. So this might sound a bit crazy to Americans. I, I mean, every, all countries have different laws. But basically, if you found out your colleague was a Nazi, like a proper Nazi, they could be fired legally and have no protections. No, They couldn't complain in court about it. Um, so the original ruling, um, it kind of relied on the fact that gender critical was of the like super extreme non-protected beliefs rather than of the protected beliefs. Like it was saying it was so disgusting that you should be able to fire someone just for believing it as opposed to it's just disgusting. So what she won was the fact that gender critical is of the lower category. So it's like being anti-abortion or anti-gay marriage rather than like being a Nazi. So in one sense, so another thing is what they defined gender critical as here. And they ended up focusing on gender critical being the belief that um, like sex can't change. That That's like what they said being gender critical is. So that single asset, that single thing is a protected belief. But if you said, I am gender critical, so I believe sex can't change, and that also means I think we should put trans people into camps or whatever, um, then that wouldn't be covered because then even though you're holding that one little piece of belief which is protected, it's, it, you know, inspired you to say something a lot more extreme. Um, so th th there is some room. So the next, she's going to have to have another case now and they've got to decide whether her actions were harassment or whether her like implementation of that belief was extreme. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, but I think it's it's actually quite interesting. So one of the most so that that was like that's like the headline of the ruling, and that's kind of what most of the newspapers focused on because they were all spinning it as a win for um, you know, anti-trans people or whatever. But kind of so I was very stressed about this case. This year we had two incredibly stressful cases coming up. This was one of them, and the other was Anne Synot was trying to have a judicial review of uh, some rule. There's so much legal jargon here. It's really like fucking tedious. But basically, we had one which was going to see whether they could ban trans women from toilets, and that went terribly for them. Um, it got thrown out, and the judge said this is completely ridiculous, and now it would be really hard for them to push anything like that again. And it kind of like positively set a precedent in our favour. So, and it cost them a hundred thousand pounds. Like, I I think it's their most spectacular fail of all time. And then this, uh, but if that had gone badly for us, that would have been horrific. That would have been like, you know, trans people can't live in this country as they do today. Um, bad. It, it would have been terrible. And this was the other one that could have been terrible because if the, so the judge ruled that just believing you can't change sex is like the protected belief. But if he'd also ruled that, um, like your belief that you should be allowed to misgender someone was protected, then that would have been really grim because it would have meant that you you like you couldn't discipline someone for misgendering and harassing trans people. So that I think the best thing like um about this case and kind of like the major point here and what why I'm like relieved, like I genuinely feel relieved at this ruling of this case, because the judge specifically said uh in like part B here this judgment does not mean those with gender critical beliefs can misgender trans pe persons with impunity. The claimant, like everyone else, will continue to be subject to the prohibitions on discrimination and harassment applied to everyone else. So this is like an explicit part of the ruling. So this is this is really good news that like this has set the president that you can't just mis misgender trans people. And as part of the original case, um, that was part of the disagreement. So it might be that although, you know, believing you can't change sex uh, is protected, that her actions still caused her to be not hired and that would be okay. So we'll see in the second ruling. And then the second part that's interesting here <clears throat> um, is this part D. It says, the judgment does not mean that employers and service providers will not be able to provide a safe environment for trans persons. 
I don't know why they say people, stupid legal stuff. Um, employers will continue to be liable, subject to defense under blah, 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 for harassment and discrimination against trans persons committed in the course of employment. So this is a really big deal, and this is really good. And they're basically saying, um, you know, you can't harass trans people at work, which is what, I mean, this was on the line. And we could say, oh, it was unlikely to be bad, but it was possible. And that's why I was stressed. And we did actually just see this in America, in Virginia. A teacher was fired for harassing like primary school children and refusing to call them by the right name and the right pronouns and stuff. And then they were fired and then they won a court case and now they're back at the same school harassing the same kids, which is fucking disgusting. So it wasn't out of the question of this going that badly for us. So this is this is good. Uh, like, I mean, maybe it's you, you could say, oh, well, some gender critical beliefs are extreme and maybe so many of them are so extreme and so many people believe in the extreme ones that they should you should be able to be fired for that. But I think... I mean, I'm not a legal expert, but I do wonder if this is kind of this potentially could backfire for them, because if you say being gender critical is solely just believing you can't change sex, that doesn't then conclude any of the utterly extreme stuff that, for example, the uh, women's human rights campaign said in their um, government submission a while ago, where they said they want to eliminate uh, trans people and um, wanted to stop all trans health care and thought that trans people were the result of pornography and um what was the other thing they said they oh, they said so much garbage um oh and and they want a complete ban on all um trans women and girls in all women's spaces full stop everything including like toilets and stuff um so none of that is like the gender critical belief that's like other beliefs that you know most gender critical people hold so those probably won't be protected because it's like been very specifically defined here. Um, so potentially for holding the belief that, um, you know, that trans people should be banned from having health care, maybe that is extreme enough. Because, uh, I mean, that is fucking disgusting. And it's arguably mits the UN definition of genocide, uh, but banning a whole group's health care. So we'll see. We'll see where this goes. But like, I think on the announcement was she won. And that was kind of stressful, but then actually it's, it's not really, I don't know, it's not, <laughs> I'm sure we give them a morale boost. I think the most annoying thing is this, from this, is they have a, had a morale boost. Um, but the judgment isn't bad and it's actually kind of good. And um, I, I talked to um, Natasha Devon on the radio, I'll cover that next week because, I'll cover that next week. Um, but she's mentioned that like, both the gender criticals and the trans people will support like celebrating this ruling. And I think I understand why, you know, they see it as this super win and we're going to see some absolute garbage opinions about it. Um, but they haven't like, I don't know, it kind of makes sense that thinking people can't change sex is protected because I mean, that on its own doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean that we should be banning trans people from stuff. That doesn't mean um, we should be banning healthcare. That doesn't mean that, trans kids shouldn't have health care. That doesn't mean, it doesn't really mean anything um, beyond like, you know, just a philosophical belief that random people around you are a different sex to what you think they are. I mean, who cares? Um, and especially if you're not allowed to harass people over it. Anyway, we've covered quite a lot on this. We'll just move on. But I just want um, to um, just want to cover this it's very frustrating um, this is like the UK media spin. It says, a woman who has lost her job after saying that people cannot change their biological sex has won an appeal. And, I mean, that kind of is what the appeal is on, but that isn't the only, like, it's not like she once said, people can't change sex and lost a job. You know, this is like, there's a lot of things here. I just want to point out some other things Mayor Force Stater has said. So this is from her website, uh, from the original court ruling. And she says, um... So it's like an excerpt from something. She says, I wouldn't lie to a child. If a, if a child says, miss, are you a man or a woman? I would question whether someone who couldn't answer that honestly should be in that position of responsibility with children. Shouldn't lie to kids or expect to lie about someone's sex. So she's got this blind belief that's a philosophical belief that people can't change sex. And so she thinks they're lying if, 
if some you know if someone was to ask me am I a man or a woman and I'd say a woman because obviously um and she then says that I would be lying to say that and then is saying that I shouldn't be in a position of responsibility with children like as I don't know as a teacher or a, a, like a guides leader or a parent like it's just disgusting um, like I don't know vile anyway and then this is another classic. There is actually loads. I just pulled up the, t the top two that I could find. Um, so here she's discussing violence against trans people, uh, you know, which sometimes ends in murder and is horrific. She says, I think they might also be doing it because they recognize. So this is the, the vi um, not the victims. This is the perpetrators. This is people. These are people who have attacked, assaulted, sexually assaulted raped, murdered, whatever, trans people. She's saying, I think they might also be doing it because they recognise or at least perceive a person involving others as non-consensual participants in a sexual act. And this is what they are outraged at. <sighs> Obviously, no one should be beating anyone up. Thanks. Uh, in relation to single-sex spaces, they exist to provide a buffer of propri uh, propriety, dignity and privacy so that people are not put in a position where boundaries are pushed and non-consensual sexual acts are facilitated. Like, trans people aren't, this is disgusting. Um, you know, trans people aren't involving others in non-consensual sex acts. What are you talking about? I'm just living my life. Like, what, how, this, like, this is such a common gender critical belief um, that somehow, for some reason, goes along with their you can't change sex nonsense. Um, that they think it's about sex and like it's just ridiculous just bullshit anyway i just think that of course the uk media is never going to cover some of the other controversial stuff that she has said um that's wrong anyway onto the title of the video and then we'll move away from air force data one more piece of news and then we're onto the brain wrap um so she is saying I wonder who has been spinning my judgment. This has 1,000, nearly 1,300 likes. I'm sure it has loads more now. This was like <laughs> hours after it happened. I wonder who has been spinning my judgment. Dozens of media outlets carry the same statement that the high court judge um, said my views may well be profoundly offensive and even distressing. But he doesn't say that in the judgment at all. Then she's got a screenshot of the quote, may well be pr um, profoundly offensive and disturbing. And like loads of articles have come up. So like, what? Like, why why are these newspapers reporting on this if the judge didn't say it? Like, that is a bit weird. Like you think maybe that's spin. Anyway, perhaps we'll just go on and have a look at the judgment, shall we? So she's, oh, this is the tweet below. So this this is tweet one of the thread. This is tweet two of the thread. And then she says, the closest thing he says is this on page 55. So let's just read this little section. Just as the legal recognition of civil partnerships does not gate not negate the right of a person to believe that marriage should only apply to heterosexual couples, Bequ uh, becoming the acquired gender for all purposes within the meaning of the GRA does not negate a person's right to believe, like the claimant, that as a matter of biology, a trans person still has their natal sex. Both beliefs may well be profoundly offensive and even distressing to many others, but they are beliefs that must be tolerated in a pluralist society. Wait, hang on. Let's just put those next to each other. Those two tweets in a row. She's saying the judge doesn't say these beliefs may be profoundly offensive and distressing. And then links a quote of the judge saying these beliefs may well be profoundly offensive and even distressing. <laughs> what? I just... How would you do this? Like... What like what fantasy world do you do you live in? Like that you've literally highlighted the bit that you, I mean you could have copied and pasted it and it put it in the tweet. It's the same words. Like what are you on about? I I I, I couldn't even understand. I couldn't believe it. Like that this was, you know, someone said, "Oh, she'd done this." I was like, "Nah." And then I saw a screenshot. I was like, "It's edited." And then I looked. And I was like, "Okay." Uh, I don't understand where this has come from. I had a look and there were some people trying to... So this is very clearly just saying that gender critical beliefs are a bit like thinking that only straight people should be allowed to get married in that 
They're beliefs that we have to tolerate in society, must be tolerated, um, but they are bullshit. I mean, that, that's quite clearly what the judge is saying. Um, it doesn't really matter what his opinion is anyway, because it's, you know, it's his legal view that's important, whether he thinks they're garbage or not. I'm not doing appeal to authority. Uh, some judges think the gender critical beliefs are great and they're bullshit, they're dickheads. Um, but he is saying, he is recognising the fact that, you know, denying gay people getting married or denying the reality of trans people's lives and actual biology um, may well be profoundly offensive and distressing. So I don't even know where you would deny that, but that is an important point that the judge is making. And that is true. These, these views are both wank. Uh, but we just got to tolerate the fact that some people have the wearing views. Um, but the gender criticals were trying to spin it like this bit about marriage first was just unrelated, nothing, like total separate paragraph. And then when the judge said both beliefs may well be profoundly offensive, they were trying to suggest that both the, be the gender critical belief and trans people's beliefs could be equally offensive. That isn't what he's saying. It's just, uh, what? I just the most spectacular cell phone I've ever seen. Like, imagine being like, no one's ever said this, and then posting a screenshot of the person you said who'd never said it underneath, saying, oh, <laughs> why are they like this? Um, <clears throat> I mean, go and look at this thread for yourself if you need to, if you don't believe. I haven't, like, this isn't edited at all. This, this 1,300 like cell phone this is incredible that there's many gender like just imagine looking at this and be like yeah this person just won one for the team and oh no the media spinning it and then reading it you'd just be like but, but it does actually say that right um anyway we'll move on from airport data just a little quick thing here so um there was a vote in parliament um for this bill called protecting the public and justice of victims and it was to do with Rape victims. I don't know the full bill, but here is a Labour MP who um, was like arguing in favour of it, like just describing it. And with 44% of rape victims already pulling out before their cases get to trial and record low prosecution and conviction rapes for rape, we cannot afford for things to deteriorate any further. We cannot afford for more women and girls to be continually let down by this government. And we cannot afford to wait any longer for action. Enough is enough. And we've been waiting for over two years now for the government's rape review. And again, the date of publication has been kicked into the long grass, with no action forthcoming from the government. And in that time, another 100,000 rapes have been reported to the police. And not only are there huge delays with the publication of the rape review, but the minister who has direct oversight for it doesn't even know who he and his department have spoken to. In the recent urgent question on the review, the Minister for Crime and Policing was asked if the review had directly consulted survivors as part of its engagement panel. He said they had been. But the reality is, Mr Deputy Speaker, that there's been no specifically commissioned survey of rape victims by the review and no round table meetings held directly with survivors of rape and sexual abuse. How on earth, in over two years since the review was announced, has there been no direct contact with survivors? How can this government say that they've put victims at the heart of this review when they've failed to speak to them directly? The views and experiences of victims must be at the centre of our efforts to turn the tide on record low levels of rape charges and convictions, but instead victims have been ignored throughout this entire process. What is clear, Mr Deputy Speaker, is that at every single step of their journey, victims are being let down by this government. They have no ideas and no plan. And Labour has one. We've got a plan. What we've, what we've do has been set out in our survivor support plan and in our green paper for ending violence against women and girls. So anyway, that was um, a Labour MP, you know, saying Labour's got a plan or whatever, but pointing out that the current government is an absolute disaster of completely failing women and girls. Um, and they had a vote about whether they can improve this. Um, 
and we'll just come onto that in a second. But I just wanted to point out the gender critical response to this. Like, obviously, gender criticals are constantly claiming that they care about defending women and girls and stuff. I mean, we all know they don't. It's just they're just using people. They're just using women and girls as a tool to attack trans people with. They didn't care about any of this stuff. And you can see by the gender critical replies to this tweet, like this lady saying, we need to do something about violence against women and girls. Like, yes, yes, we do. Because the government's failing. Like she said, 100,000 um, rape and sexual assault cases were recorded. Like, it's just disgusting. And they're not doing anything about it. And it's getting worse. Apparently, it's uh, currently a record low um, number of rape prosecutions. Like, th that's horrific. This government is absolutely failing. And but all of the gender critical people are just whining about trans people instead. Like here's someone says, um, I'll support your party and listen to you about rape when you stop you when you like kick trans women out of prisons. So someone else is talking about Karen White, because of course they are. Um, this person has just posted a gif of Carmen Carrera, um, as if that's an excuse to ignore this lady who's trying to fight for ending violence against women and girls. Like then this person Will you be looking to protect vulnerable will women then? Yes, that's literally what she's arguing for. Um, for instance, standing up against self they're like they're just deranged. This is the only thing they care about. All they care about is like, you know, making a fuss about trans people and using women to attack them. Um, you know, where's the support for this? This lady's saying the right thing. You know, if she was gender critical, I would support everything she said there because there wasn't any crappy dog whistles. This isn't like she's not trying to make this about trans people. And, you know, Ending sexual assault and rape is like more important than GRA reform for a trans person. And it doesn't even affect any of these idiots who are replying here. Um, you, and they were all, you know, they're saying, oh, I'll never vote Labour again or whatever. Labour's losing women. And so they're what, voting Conservatives, letting the Conservative win. And the Conservatives are causing all this damage. They're taking away funding from, um, you know, women's shelters as well. It's just so ridiculous. And it just shows they've just been sold this ridiculous culture war and it means they can absolutely not give a shit about women and girls and just focus on this one stupid issue um like fuck off but anyway just thought it'd be interesting to look at who voted for this bill and what a surprise in the oh my camera cuts off in the uh abstained section uh jack jackie doyle price who's like the gender critical politician who voted against gay marriage, uh, didn't vote for this bill. She didn't vote against it, but she didn't vote for it. What a surprise. They don't give a shit. They do not give... None, none of these people give a shit about women and girls' safety or, you know, um, rape shelters or funding for women's services. They, they don't care. It's just a tool to attack trans people with. Anyway, let's move on to the brain rot section and uh, just pointing out here the hashtag I stand with Mary Miller um, you know they will if you're not are you a somebody in the gender critical world if you don't have an I stand with hashtag like don't think so uh, I don't think gremlin hands ever got one he got um Graham is an ally which if you don't capitalize properly says Graham is anally which is uh <laughs> It was pretty good. Anyway, this person says, lesbians are females that have exclusively have sex with other females. You know, they always have to talk like cattle herders or incels. Uh, and this is um, a trans woman who is gender critical. And I don't know, but definitely doesn't call herself a lesbian. I don't know what her sexuality is, but she's obviously one of these people who thinks that trans women can't be straight women or gay women. I don't know, whatever. Um, so then this person replies, so can a woman be a lesbian if she has not had sex? And this person says, my personal belief is no. This is, this is such a, like, what, it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> of course you can be a lesbian if you haven't had sex. Because you can be gay if you haven't had sex. And you can be straight if you haven't had sex. And you can be bisexual if you haven't had sex. But this is, this is like... An, an LGB alliance, gender critical ideology classic. Like so many of them think this. They think that sexuality is like a performance rather than something you are. Because they, 
you know, they want to distance it from like the LGBT rights movement. And so they also are all like pro section 20A and all this kind of garbage. And to them, sexuality is something you do. So you're a lesbian because you are a woman who is having sex with a woman. And even if you yourself are bisexual or whatever. And uh, I just think this is like a symptom of a like absolute brain rot ideology. Um, because obviously you could be any sexuality, any of them, including lesbian, which for some reason they always pick out as different, even though it's the same. You could be any sexuality and never have sex in your life. What? Like, sexuality isn't just about sex. Garbage belief. Anyway, um, so this person's like, in order to be, so this person's been accused of being anti-science for being a trans person, I don't know. In order to be anti-science, um, science has to degree, disagree with you, and in reality, it doesn't. All major psychological and medical organisations recognise trans people exist and may require therapy and medical treatment, so you're more det detached from reality than I thought. They're right. How they, they'll, they always come in and say trans people are science deniers, and then you're like, whoa, what science am I denying? Because all I'm doing is repeating like the medical consensus. But then this person, like often, you know, they'll try and deflect, or they'll you know, come up with some excuse or they post that one paper from Sweden or whatever. Um, but this person's gone for a new strategy I've not seen before. Psychology and medicine aren't scientific. <laughs> yeah, all right, mate. Um, like, I, I guess I am a science denier if we just all just claim all the science that I agree with isn't, isn't actually science. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, moving on. <laughs> so this is the same person in a different argument. And we're arguing about, you know, the classic, what is sex? Um, like, what is, like, sex in biology terms, not in sexy time terms. Um, and they say, sex is morphology based on developmental pathways formed in the embryonic stage. So this is like level four, gender critical apologetics. Level one is, you are what your genitals are. And then they realize that trans people can change genitals. So they back off and like, you are what your chromosomes are. And then, they get linked, um, you know, a Wikipedia page or a scientific paper showing that some cis people have chromosomes that you would expect to get from the other sex. And it's actually way more complicated. So then the next thing is sex is gametes, because there's kind of only really two types of gametes. I mean, that, that that's a sensible categorization. But then not everyone has gametes. So then level four is where you come up with some gamete potential hand wavy bullshit where you say sex is gametes but also people who don't have gametes are still in the same category because i'm sure it just works out please don't ask me any questions um and so this that's this when you see gamete potential when you see sex is morphology based on developmental pop like <clears throat> what they're trying to what the, i mean what's going on here is they're just doing a circular definition they're just saying you're of this sex because I think you're of this sex. And my excuse is that you have gamete potential, even though you don't have any potential to make any gametes. So the question to ask here is, well, how do you measure that? Because they're saying it's an objective, measurable category, categorization system, and that it's not a social construct, which of course it is. Um, so like, you should just be able to measure it. Like you can measure what gametes people have. If sex was defined by gametes, we could easily measure Oh, you have this type of gamete. Oh, you have this type of gamete. Oh, you have no gametes. Three easy categories there that we could easily sort people by. Um, but gamete potential, how do you measure that? So that's what I was asking. You never get a straight answer. But then this person does a little cell phone, second cell phone of the day. Uh, or third? Yeah, third cell phone of the day. Um, they say, how did you survive... Oh, I think they meant decide. How did you decide what you wanted to change surgically? What you wanted to change is what we measure. But I changed it. So if you measured it, then it would come out saying that I was female. So that means you think trans people can change sex just with surgery? Which is like the opposite of gender critical garbage because it's all contradictory mess and they always end up contradicting themselves. I just thought it was hilarious. Like, you know, they're like, oh, well, your sex is defined by your orbital ridge. I'm like, yeah, okay. Well, if you want to do that, then, you know, like... 
that never one may. Well, you know, everyone does. But like, if you grind it off. Anyway, <laughs> constant cell phones. So our Alien Head of the Week award goes to you. Will the forced teeming ever end? Take the training wheels off and stand on your own ideology. Lockheed Martin, that's like a weapons manufacturer, supports your identity um, and every other multinational corporation. Every greedy billionaire on the planet is invested in making everyone trans. It's going to end. <laughs> Why are you talking? What does this mean? Like, uh, it kind of means something-ish, half of it. Like, they're saying that big companies post, like, a pride flag or whatever. Um, yeah, they do. In in some countries and in other countries they don't because they just suck up to whatever government and is popular in that country. And most people are pro-trans in the UK. So in the UK, all the companies pretend they're pro-trans. They don't do anything for trans people. Um, you know, no no capitalist stuff would, would help trans people if they could avoid it, if it wasn't for... Like, legislation or whatever so doesn't what you're saying is kind of garbage but like what is this every billionaire is invested in making everyone trans did you mean every billionaire or were you doing a like a every billionaire from this list and they just all happen to be jewish kind of thing um i don't know but i think that's probably where they're getting this from this idea that billionaires created trans rights which makes no sense at all because if billionaires created trans it just makes no sense at all i'm not even gonna try and explain it it's fucking garbage Oh, this is a YouTube comment. So this someone says, this one person comes in and says, boys shouldn't be playing with girls' toys. So, already? That's indoctrination. Let them be boys until at least 16, then they can go all females and gay or even trans, but until then raise them to be men. So I said, why? They're like, it's too young to be pushing them down a certain route is all. It's like, but you literally just argued to push them down a certain... You just said, raise them to be met. That's pushing them down a route. So I was like, why not let all kids play with all toys? Because that's not pushing... Them down. That's like the definition of not pushing them down a route, isn't it? For toys. Like, let them do what they want, as opposed to what you're saying is pushing them down a route. And they said, I don't think you're doing that. I feel you're actively trying to get young boys to watch Frozen <laughs> and other female stuff. Female stuff. I know you're well-intentioned, but this could be very dangerous. <laughs> the, the trans agenda is getting young boys to watch Frozen. <laughs> Which is female. It's a female film. Only, only girls can enjoy it. And if you watch it even once, then you'll become a transgenderist. Like me. Um... Pfft. This is just so classic. They're like, don't indoctrinate. And then they literally explicitly advocate for indoctrination. For like having boys toys and girls toys is some form of indoctrination. It's teaching girls and boys that there's like, this is what girls do. This is what boys do. You can't have this hobby. You can't play with these toys. You can't like this color. And it's fucking bullshit. Um, and it's, it is an, it's an indoctrination into like the patriarchy and loads of anti-trans people including gender critical people though this person clearly I, I don't think they're gender critical um you know they push for explicit indoctrination of particularly trans kids but all kids into fitting in boxes because that's what they want um and that's what we've seen from all the conversion therapists you know that's what they always advocate stop trans kids from playing the toys they want make them force them to play with toys for their birth sex which is garbage um framing i don't know next you are erasing and excluding yourselves from your actual experience of being sex non-conforming trans identified men or trans identified women. sex non-conforming that's that's why i've highlighted this one the rest is rubbish whatever um sex non-conforming like conform to your sex that's what gender stereotypes is. That's what gender critical people, this person's gender critical, that's what gender critical people claim to be against. But this is just, like, I've you see this all the time. What they do is they say sex is biology, gender is bullshit, but then to them, gender is just trans people, 
and everything else, including gender stereotypes and the garbage of like kids should play with certain toys are sex based. So they've just relabeled gender stereotypes and then they start enforcing that. And it's like when you see them say, I say sex based pronouns, like pronouns are a gender construct and you're just being the gender police. You're not gender critical. You're not critical of anything. You're literally just enforcing gender stereotypes. That, that's, that's the sole thing you're doing here. That's what sex conforming is. Um, you, you can't conform to the bits of your body like <sighs> rubbish. I'm gender critical and I'm not transphobic, homophobic or racist. Hmm. Interesting. You've you've added those other two on there. My saying all GCs are transphobic. You've accused me without evidence of something I'm not. Sounds a bit hate crimey to me. Maybe say some next time to avoid coming across gender critical phobic. Ah, oh! like dispense the um, straight phobic banners or the you're being racist against white people streamers like this is the equivalent um you can't be i mean no one's irrationally prejudiced against gender critical people because like you can't be irrationally prejudiced against them because their view is bullshit like by saying this is transphobic <laughs> uh, it's not reverse racism whatever you're trying to claim it is like fuck off absolute rubbish but also sounds a bit hate crimey no you can't do a hate crime <laughs> against a gender critical person because no one's born gender critical nonsense um ugh. rubbish framing oh we've got a biology master here Th this is like my favorite um emoji to censor people with and i always feel like it's along with the alien head it's one of the most coveted ones of the week because i i always want to put it on the best person for it to match like the most ridiculous take of the week and here we have not the most ridiculous take of the week, but the most ridiculous take that I'm censoring of the week. Most ridiculous one's coming at the end. So they say, if she can't get pregnant, she's a trans woman spiritually, even if born with a vagina. <laughs> this is why LBTs and feminists are allies. Spiritually infertile. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> what does this mean? How can you be a trans woman spiritually if you're a cis woman? W why have you included, like, is LBTs meant to be lesbians, bisexual women, and trans women? Like, are you saying that lesbians are infertile? Are bisexual women infertile? Who might even be in a straight relationship? <laughs> like, oh, what does this mean at all? <laughs> How do they, who comes up with this stuff? Like, obviously they know these concepts and they know these words and they're trying to make an argument, but how do you have that much, like, understanding and just not, it's like it was written by a robot. Like, how do you get into the situation? It's too, it's too well constructed to be written by a robot, but it, it makes so little sense. Like, it's struggle to believe a human thought it. Like, what are you on? Spiritually infertile. <laughs> Even though you're actually fertile, you could be spiritually infertile. Um, okay, good take, mate. Um, oh. This lady, I think, is a journalist now, used to be a politician, used to be a conservative politician, I think. She's like, keep using phrases like cis women and you perpetuate abuse, like fucking garbage. Um, so I've said, a cis person is a person who isn't a trans person. Without a word for the group of people who aren't trans, we cannot combat transphobia and transphobic abuse. So no, that's trivially false. Like, this is the whole point of having the word cis. If, if there was no transphobia at all, it, we wouldn't need the words for trans and cis. Like, I mean, we might if people were asking which ones they were and diagnosing people for a medical treatment or whatever, but like, it's, it's just, it wouldn't be important. Like, it wouldn't be important to you describe someone or a group of people as cis or trans because, like, discussing prejudice is the main use for, ha you know, having these terms. And it's the same with homophobia. Like, if you were offended by the word straight or he heterosexual, then, like, I don't care because we've got to fight against homophobia and 
you know, in order to describe like straight privilege and oppression that gay people face, we need words for these things. These concepts exist, even if we don't have words for them. Like some people are not trans. That's just a fact. Some people are trans and some people are not trans. Regardless, even if you think being trans is a mental illness, some people aren't that. So they are not trans. And cis is a word that's meant not trans for 2,400 years, which is longer than English or England. So piss off. And anyway, someone says, oh, they come in with a real snipe. That's absolute logical slam dunk. How am I going to recover from this? They're like, do you have a word for people who aren't ginger? Do you habitually use that word to describe them? Um, yeah. <laughs> we have the word blonde and we have the word brown haired or brunette and we have red haired. Um, I think red hair is different to ginger. I don't know. Maybe that's the same word. Um, we do actually have words for other hair colours and we do actually use them. So, yes. Good dunk. And this, this was an attempted dunk, by the way. Um... It they kind of backfired and they tried to deflect after this, but like, where were you even going with this? Did you genuinely think that we had like ginger hair and normal hair? Like, I'm sure some people want to try and do that. Some, you know, ginger people do get bullied, um, which is wank. <laughs> anyway, great dunk, mate. <clears throat> and talking of great logical dunks, we've got absolute flipping logic wizard here. Uh, who's got the clown emoji. It's another good one. It's another good one to cover it. Like, this is a complete joke of, a, of an argument. Um, trans people can be cisgender if they say they are according to self-determination theory. Oh, you're so clever. Yeah, just like, I'll say like, oh, you know, people should be able to determine their own boundaries. Oh, you think they should be able to choose? Maybe they should be able to choose that they're both on and off at the same time. Like, what are you talking about? Like, this is... At best, a word game. But it's also a word game that's completely ridiculous because I'm not even going to explain it. Like, what an embarrassing attempt at an argument. Imagine coming out with that as your, your best dunk against trans people. Honestly, what's wrong with you? <laughs> well done. Um, Hi, Katie. I blocked you because it's almost summer and the days are long and I don't need your gaslight. Thanks so much. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, it's kind of like almost endearing this weirdness, isn't it? Like, um, I know that they were trying to say that I gaslight people, which is rubbish. Um, but like, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of like a little poetic, like the days are long and I do not need your gaslight. Um, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll just let you, I'll let you have that, mate. If I, I I'm happy with that. <laughs> Um, so here's me arguing with someone who claims that they can always tell. I think this is about sexuality. Um, some, you know, if someone says, I'm not attracted to trans people, that's like saying, I'm not attracted to left-handed people. Um, you know, you could make that decision. And if someone said, oh, by the way, I'm left-handed, you could be like, oh, I've decided not to, or I don't like that because I've got an irrational prejudice or I'm politically opposed to that. that that's possible. But you're, um sexual orientation which is based upon what you can sense obviously can't detect who is left-handed and it can't detect who was born on a wednesday and it can't detect people who are gemini's or whatever and you can't detect who's trans or not you know some people you can look and you can be like oh they're probably trans you see someone writing with a pen on the wall with their left hand they're probably left-handed but that doesn't mean you can detect it it's not like a thing that you can see like you can sense whether someone has like hair you could touch you can see it, um, you can feel it, like, brushing against you or something. <clears throat> um, and you can't for transness, you can't for sexuality. You can't, you know, you can't say, oh, I'm not attracted to bisexual people because you don't know if someone's bisexual or not. Even though you could potentially work out that some people are because you could see them, you know, making out with people of all different... Anyway, whatever. Um, so I've said, I can guess it right most of the time isn't a refutation of you can't always tell. <laughs> Because that was obviously their argument. And you need, we can always tell to be true for the statement, I'm never attracted to trans people to be true. It's not confusing or complicated. Um, this person says, for some reason, have chosen to go with this. Women genuinely become, 
women generally become invisible to men when they turn 40 years old. To find someone... To find... Ugh, to find someone to find them attractive is pretty difficult. Do these women stop being women because no one finds them sexually attractive? No. No, they don't. Was... Is that a dunk? Uh, and what do you mean women become invisible to men when they're 40? It just feels like this incel sexual marketplace value stuff where they're like, once you're 25, your sexual market value is worthless. Uh, you know, women are disgusting. Um, I, just, I think this is a cis man as well, gender critical man, you know, probably. <clears throat> um... Well, oh, I mean, what is this? That I know it's a very classic anti-trans argument to do that everything is binary, and they think, well, because I'm saying that straight men are attracted to trans women, that therefore straight men aren't attracted to someone, then they're not a woman. But obviously, it doesn't make any sense at all because no man is attracted to all women, and it doesn't matter whether men are attracted to women or not because they're still women. I haven't even attempted to make any claim like that. You're making this claim and ballsing it up. Like, what are you doing? <clears throat> like, nonsense. <laughs> just, you just turned up, said something a bit misogynistic. And then like, I don't know, owned yourself and then went. Anyway, so oh, this was actually a reply to um, the Mayor Forstater thing. I said, you can believe whatever hateful garbage you like. But if you're going to start com campaigning against trans people's rights and freedoms, harassing them or harming people, then you can fuck off. Oh, no, not I didn't say trans here. This is a general statement, and it's true, like the judge said, for homophobic people and also for, you know, misogynists and racists. You can believe it, um, but if you start acting on it, start misgendering people at work, start calling your colleague a murderer because she's had an abortion, um, then that's harassment and you can fuck off. And then this person has said, being gender critical is not hateful. It's hateful of you to keep shouting this abuse. This is what me telling bigots to fuck off apparently is abuse. So I am in breach of the law. <laughs> so this is one of the things I think is worth being aware of going forward. The gender critical cult is going to get this idea that criticizing them is against the law that they're going to push for blasphemy laws. Like, the, this is what they... This is going to be a common thread going forwards. From now on, you're going to have them saying, my views are protected beliefs, so you're not allowed to criticise me, and I'm going to report you to the police. Um, and uh, just ignore it. It's just garbage. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, it's literally the opposite of what the ruling said, where you can hold any belief and you can't harass people. Like... Saying this belief is shit isn't harassing people. Um, or atheists couldn't exist, for example. Um, oh, this was an interesting one from a sex not gender hashtag person. What's transphobic is the transgender ideology. Uh, ironically true, because transgender ideology is a transphobic dog whistle. But anyway, female to male transgenders have to be transsexuals. Male to female transgenders just have to stop taking female hormones? Get back to us when transgenders start calling themselves <laughs> transphobic as they are with female to male transsexuals. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? <laughs> like... The Trans men have to be transsexuals and trans women have to stop taking female hormones. I forgot to take mine today. I better do that after the show. Um, I've, I've <laughs> so, um, someone I saw who actually linked me this, um, carried on talking to them and they found out that um, this person was trying to make the claim that trans women don't transition properly but all trans men do because all trans men get top surgery and not all trans women do or something 
I don't quite know what was going on through the mind. It's, mm. <laughs> anyway, um, oh, this is absolute classic gender critical. You see this all the time. They'll bring up bathroom bills. They'll make some fuss about women's spaces. And then you'll say, that's garbage. And then they will be faced with this issue where there is only actually three ways to police women in women's spaces. One is you can let society decide. If someone decides you look like a man, then they can kick you out. And they can make a fuss. And, you know, it's just based on people's opinions. It'll be subjective. And we know when they do that, that mainly cis women get targeted because there are just more cis women and it creates pressures for women to adhere to sexist stereotypes to avoid harassment. That is option number one. And that's what we saw with like the North Carolina bathroom bill. It was just trans people are now illegal. If you see one, you report it. And then the police turn up and they drag cis women out the bathroom because they've got short hair. That, that, that's what happens. Number two is you have some kind of document check. So to get into the bathroom, you have to show an ID or... Um, you know, if someone says that looks like a man and the police turn up and then you show your ID, then you're OK. But if you don't have one, then you'll get kicked out. But in the UK, that obviously wouldn't work because you can self ID all of your legal ID anyway. Uh, so that would require a complete rework of the passport and driving license system. So that's completely impractical. And then the third option is what we have today and we've always had in this country ever, which is self ID, which they don't like. But it's funny because they don't consider this. All they know is the phrase self-ID and they don't like it, but they don't even really know what it means. So they end up just re-proposing it as a solution because they think, well, we can't just have any old person just accusing people of being men because that's obviously garbage. And we can't have a document check. So I know I've got, a, I've got a third solution. This could be sorted by having toilets for people with a penis and toilets for people with a vagina, a vi vi vagina, um, as they've written. If you see a picture of a vagina, on a toilet door and you have a penis, don't enter the toilet. You, see, what you're saying is what we have today, but instead of a picture of man and woman, you want a picture of actual genitals <laughs> on the door. And then you let people themselves decide if those rooms are best for them. That, that's what you're arguing. So you're literally arguing for self ID, apart from the one big change you want to what we have today is you want pictures of genitals on the toilet doors rather than of like a cartoon man or woman. Kind of sounds like everything you don't want as well as slightly worse for us to. Um, nice effort though. Th this happens a lot. Like really, when, when you see someone talking about spaces and proposing solutions, just think of that there is three things, um, three possibilities. And, you know, they're the only options. And just see which one and call out the problems. One of them we're, you know, we'll end up in cis women being harassed, as well as trans women, of course, and won't stop all trans women. The other one requires complete work, rework of the law and everyone to carry a female ID around with them to prove they're allowed to go to the toilet. And then the other one is what we have today, which they will repropose. Just just watch. They do do this, and I've seen this a thousand times. Um, <clears throat> so this person says, I don't know, some bullshit from some news article. This is actually untrue and contains some very dangerous advice. Gender critical beliefs are protected in law. See, this is this is that thing that I was just saying. They're all going to think that they're like immune to criticism now. So the same way as religious beliefs. Yes, the same way as religious beliefs. That is exactly right. So that means I can say all religions are stupid. And I can say, I don't believe in your God. And I can say, you know, whatever I want, as long as I don't go up and harass people of any religions, because that is being a dickhead. Um... And then they've said abuse and mockery of gender critical people. And then they give some examples. Cis, <laughs> tough and transphobe is against the law and could lead to dismiss dismissal. No, it can't. <laughs> uh, if you're being transphobic, you're being transphobic. And we've already we already saw the decision was over, um, you know, the belief that sex can't change. So... You know, if you're advocating to ban me from the toilets or misgendering me and I call you a transphobe, I don't think that it's going to be me who's losing that. Uh, not going to be me being dismissed, mate. But they've all got this thing. So I think someone pointed out that the um, biggest worry of this ruling is all the gender critical law that they're going to make up about it. And some of them are now going to feel empowered to harass trans people at work because they won't have read the ruling. They'll just have read... 
gender critical is protected like religion. And now they'll think that means that no one's allowed to criticise them. So they'll go and harass trans people. And then, like, small low-level managers and HR departments and stuff aren't going to know what the law is. And they're not going to want a big court case, so they're just going to try and settle it. And if they're transphobic, then that's not going to go well for trans people. So that's the biggest concern about this. And I think it's why it's important to make sure this information is corrected when you see this garbage. Like, that isn't... <laughs> If you think that the law stops people from saying the word cis, mate, you can fuck off. <laughs> um, <clears throat> just a couple more. Um, so this person says, I would say the main issue is that people are scared of having their, or their personally opinions on this matter and end up being sued in courts or being forced to a gender neutral terminology for everyday life. <laughs> You're forced to use gender neutral terminology for everything in your life. Everything. Even when like you're in the shower at home and your dog comes in and you're like, oh, what is she doing? No, I can't say she. It's got to be gender neutral. I'm being forced for life. Like, what are you want about? They just they have these most ridiculous they're just scared of the most ridiculous things. Like this is transphobia in like its purest sense. I am just scared. I am scared of this. I don't understand it and I am scared. Like no one is forcing you to use gender neutral terminology for everyday life. They're just saying if someone says my pronouns are they and them, then just do that, please. Thank you. <laughs> oh, this this person is absolutely mad. Um, they've come out with a few mad takes this week. Like this was a contender for the crazy um face. Uh so LGBT Foundation has said, we stand with our trans and non-binary siblings today. Blah, blah, blah. And then they stress, like, you know, the judge just says you can't harass people because they want to correct this misinformation. It needs to be widely known that harassing trans people, misgender, including misgendering, uh, is protected by the law. You know, you can't do that. But then this person, you know, they love their, like, little doomsday conspiracy theories. Any moment now trans ideology or gender ideology or whatever is going to come crashing down and it will be over trans people will be gone like it's just going to be done mermaids will be closed stone wall will be destroyed gay people won't be able to get married anymore whatever they just think that there's this big reckoning day coming because all cults have this like literally all cults have this um this kind of thinking of like the big retribution is coming so this person says i kind of think the trans rights activists are not seeing the writing on the wall pronouns are over if you can't force everyone to do it you and you can't anymore it's over not today and it will take a while for everybody to stop clapping for tinkerbell but they will stop she's a goner uh <laughs> pronoun, pronouns are over um it's a shame that you started this tweet with a pronoun isn't it <laughs> i think someone said there were nine in here first we should count I, um, is one, you, if you can't force someone to, to do it, three, and you, four, it's over, five, it will take a while, six, for everyone to stop clapping for Tim, but they will, seven, she's a goner, eight. Okay, so I found eight, maybe let us know if you can find more than eight. <laughs> um, but also someone else pointed out that this person's like, cheering for the death of Tinkerbell? Like... That's... <laughs> isn't she meant to be the good character? Why... Anyway, um, so just rem just have this, like, kind of are they, like, a supervillain vibe in mind as we go forwards. Because uh, it's going to come up in a minute. So this person... Oh, this... Uh, utterly insane like what world do these people live in it, the, the, they are you know gender critical is like law is so detached from reality that they say stuff like this so one of them says try if you imagine uh, try if you can to imagine if the boot was on the other foot think in terms of principles what if voicing your gender identity got you sacked vilified and rejected by countless institutions can you imagine that second person says don't think that's ever been considered by gender ideologists. 
for one second. Can you imagine it? They'd be screaming from the streets, streets about the discrimination and they'd be right. I guess if it doesn't affect you though, that's not a problem. Are you fucking serious? Do you seriously think no trans people have been fired for being trans? What are you talking about? I, I absolutely bet every single trans person who's been out for more than a year personally knows someone who has lost their job because they're trans. Like, it's one of the most common things. The other day they did a survey in the UK and one third of employers said they wouldn't hire a trans person. I know so many people who have been fired for being trans. Like, I've interviewed one on my channel, um, Pastor June, who was um, a pastor for a Christian church in America who lost her job very publicly for being trans. Like, it's so common. It's like, it's like a meme. Like, trans people losing their jobs. It's, when we talk about trans rights, discrimination in employment is, like, the main thing, along with healthcare. Like, trans people can't get healthcare, and they can't even get a job to feed themselves. It's one of the biggest drivers of detransition. Um, people facing transphobia and not being able to get a job, not being able to get a home. Like, what are you talking about? You so fucking privileged that you think that, oh, you know, I'm not allowed to harass trans people at work anymore. Oh, it's so bad. They don't know what it's like. Like, fuck off. You, like, privileged fuck. Like, what is wrong with you? How do you get in this state? You're campaigning against trans people's rights and you don't even know the fucking first thing that we're asking for. Of course you don't. You have to be this sheltered, ignorant, cis-privileged bullshit to hold these fucking stupid ideas. Um, go and talk to some actual trans people, not just that one who writes for The Spectator who you like, because they hate trans people too. Like, absolutely disgustingly stupid. Overwhelmingly ignorant. <sighs> Unreal. Fuck off. <laughs> anyway... This is what we're ending with, and we're coming back to the theme of a supervillain. So this is a little bit small. Um, I hope you'll be able to read it. But I'll read so I was in two minds about whether to censor this person. They're not super massive or influential in the gender critical movement, but they're quite big. Um, they're quite involved, and they have like a shop, a bit like Posey Parker does, where they sell like merch. We also covered them in the previous episode because they're the person who did Vigil for the Lost which does have quite a few responses. Uh, go, I think it's episode one of this season. Definitely watch Vigil for the Lost because it's one of the mo like most mad things you've ever seen. And it turns out that's kind of this person's theme. Um, and I saw this post and as you'll see, it's about me. Um, and it's just so mad. And I, d but oh, another reason that I've, chosen to not censor this person is, as you'll see, the choice, their writing style and their name is kind of important here. So this person's uh, internet name, at least, I don't know if it's the real name, is Egan. And their username is Eganius, which I guess is an attempted pun on genius. So just bear that in mind. So they say, do you know why influencers of gender ideology narcissistic autogynophilic men they always have to use all these fucking stupid terms so for anyone who doesn't know gender ideology is i mean depending on who you ask it's just feminism or it's lgbt rights or it's trans rights or trans people should be allowed to go to the toilet whatever and autogynophilic means um trans women they're claiming that trans women are perverts basically um i mean that's what they mean by this um why do they shout so much they need attention. They do everything to look like women. And then this is... This... <laughs> this is why I didn't sense this person's name. Because they've said... They do everything to look like women. Extensive plastic surgeries. Brow, forehead, hairline, cheek implants. Imagine nobody would tell them they've... They've, they've, they've made an egg pun. In their little rant about how they think trans people are perverts. <laughs> why it's like someone was pointed out it's like they're a batman supervillain. it's like mr freeze saying like ice to meet you like you're making a pun on your own name in some weird rant like Ugh. and this isn't it's not the only one why, why would you do this <laughs> this is so weird <laughs> it's so weird i don't understand and then they say 
those autogynephilic men have many things in common. Before they started to adjust their bodies by plastic surgeries, they were just macho men playing on bass guitars, having trash metal bands and extra masculine hobbies whilst hiding the uh, girl inside. They still have those hobbies. So this is what I was like. I think this is about me. So they, when they've said trash metal, they actually mean thrash metal. So when I got doxxed, um, please don't look this up. I, you know, it's lame. But when I got doxxed, they found a picture from an old band I used to be in where I used to play the bass. And it wasn't a thrash metal band. I've never actually been a bassist in a thrash metal band in my life. But Graham Linehan said that I had. So now that's gender critical law and it's going to be true forever regardless of what happened. Um, so... The, this is about me. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident. You know what other bassists? I'm not, like now main guitar. I'm traitor to bassist. Sorry, bassist. Like, are they talking about influencers play bass? I, I, I don't think I'm reading into this. I, I'm, I'm pretty confident. This is about me. These AGP men don't. Oh, the other reason that I'm confident this is about me. In the first tweet, they said extensive plastic surgeries, brow, forehead, hairline, cheek implants. Now, I have, look, you get this little crew of, from Kiwi Farms, which is obviously where she's got all of this information from, which is that like stalking hate website where the Christchurch shooter posted his manifesto and live streamed his murder spree, which is fucking horrific. Um, <laughs> well, on there, for some reason, they have decided that I've had cheek implants. And I get these little people every now and then I just get one. Like I had like two last week, an anonymous account who would just make a comment about my cheek implants. Um, and it's that's the source of it. Like someone on there has decided this and then they go there. You know, you, you get these themes running through gender critical. It's like when they start talking about Martin Rothblatt, you know, they've been reading Jennifer Billick and that they're pushing this anti-Semitic conspiracy series stuff. And you know when, you know, there was, there's a few things and saying about thrash metal basis, you know, that's from Graham Linehan. And one of them is talking about cheek implants, you know, they've got it from Kiwi Farms. Um, and like, I haven't had cheek implants. And I just think it's really funny because when they come for your appearance and they point out something that you're not insecure about at all, and it's like natural. It's just a real big cell phone, isn't it? They're like, oh, I can tell your fake cheek implants. It's like, you know, I have had surgery on my face. And in fact, when I had it, I listed all the things I had publicly. And I posted like the before and after shots of my skull on Instagram. Um, so like, I'm not ashamed of it. I, w I wouldn't lie about it. I just I ha just haven't had them. These, these are the cheeks that I was born with or grew. Um, so... Like, it's just got to be about me. I'm, you know, you can see the little embarrassing threads of cell phone running through it. And anyway, this blah, 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 blah. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so they've already said, they've already, they've already done some puns on their own name. They've already said trash metal instead of thrash metal. They've already claimed some weird conspiracy theories about me personally. <clears throat> they've also said that... Playing in a metal band is a masculine hobby. And then have like criticized me for not getting rid of that hobby. Like, firstly, no, it isn't. Fuck off. Metal is for everyone. Um, that's a good song, by the way. Oh shit, who's it by? I've forgotten. <clears throat> I think it's a German power metal band. Try and find it, it's a really good song. <laughs> anyway, metal is for everyone. And fighting against sexism in metal is an ongoing battle. Metal's a little bit slow. It's probably behind like some like pop music or mainstream genre. And there's already a lot of sexism in them. But fighting against sexism is a thing that's been ongoing for metal in my whole life. And it has got better. There are more women at gigs now. There are more women in bands now. In fact, like it's it used to be if there was a woman in the band, it would be like, whoa, it's like a gimmick. Like it's so new and you don't, you never see women in bands. And now it's common. Like, just having a woman in the band is just normal, like my band, for example, um, which is great. Like, it's massive progress. So 
I, I know this is like a small thing, but like as a metalhead, I just find it really sexist and bullshit to say that metal is a masculine hobby. Women can have it. All of my best friends in real life, all of them are metalheads. Uh, you know, women, metalheads. Um, and like, that's what we bond over because, you know, they're cis women. Um, anyway, this person then says, just to add to some more bullshit stereotypes, they say another thing, another thing narcissistic autogynophilic men have in common you can hear it in the videos of the biggest influencers on gender ideology. Oh, maybe it isn't me. I'm not one of the biggest. <laughs> um, even after all the plastic surgeries, they tend to do a very eggs... <laughs> Have they put two eggs in there? No, just one. Eggs exaggerated gay man accent. Uh, when you're from the gay man region. <laughs> It's an, or, got an authentic gay man accent from gay man yeah. <laughs> what are you on about? Ridiculous. Because they think that's how women speak and act. I mean, I just... I just talk in my voice, don't I? <laughs> don't I, mate? You, gender criticals are always saying like I speak like a... Like a don't I, mate? You sound like a bloke, you sound like a straight man. And they're like, oh, you sound like a gay man. Like, just decide. Um... And then they, I don't know, there's all kind of other garbage here. Um, another thing autogynophilic men have in common, those macho lovers of trash metals <laughs> see themselves as cute anime girls. I mean, maybe this isn't about me. If there's, because I've seen two animes. Well, I've seen, th I've seen some Pokemon episodes back in the 90s. I've seen Death Note and I've seen... Uh, Princess Mononoke, I've seen that one. Um, I might have seen bits of Spirited Away. I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen many animes. So maybe this, if there's another like trans woman YouTuber or whatever with a gay man accent who is a bassist in a thrash metal band, like hit me up. I I want to meet them. Um, even if they like anime, uh, they believe they can turn into pretty anime women. That's why they want to use anime icons. They have watched too much Futter lesbian hentai oh, he i think hentai's like trans is it trans porn or like porn i don't know um uh <laughs> so, or, then they've got this like fake box of estrogen the, the claim is about money um <laughs> I don't, this is just such a weird post from a weird person but just to like, there's so much here. There's, there's so many things here. This weird thing where you're putting your own name as a pun in your own rant. Like, just imagine if I just, like, snuck, like... Like, I don't know. I can't even do it. It doesn't even work with Katie to say it. But it's like, why would you do that? Why would you sneak the word egg into things? When you're talking about an exaggerated gay man accent. Why are you, why are you saying trash metal? Why couldn't you even Google the word? Um, what... <laughs> Why have you got all these weird conspiracy theories of hate websites about me? Like, uh, <laughs> it's just, it's just like a Batman supervillain. Like someone was like, she's like a Batman villain. And it's true. And it's just so weird. Why are you like this? Just, just get a hobby, even a masculine hobby. Like, <laughs> just get any hobby. Um, Anyway, um, thank you very much, everyone. That was Turf Wars. Um, we're back on it with the new camera. Uh, so you can see my eyeshadow nicely. Um, I hope that was fun. Uh, it, I've, I've met, I have missed doing Turf Wars. <clears throat> um, but I did, I had a burnout. It was in the week coming up to the and sign up case. And I just thought, you know, if, if we lose this and we get wrecked on the mayor for state of one, two trans rights in this country are going to be fucking grim. And <clears throat> sorry. And um, I, you know, I was doing three shows a week. I'd love to get back on the XX Factor. I've been talking to Krista, you know, in the future. She's very busy at the moment, too. But we might be able to do like a season two of that. Um and also I've got the Transatlantic Call-In Show and 
you know, the worst thing, all of this stuff, stressing about my future, my own rights, trying to manage all these things I've said yes to, which I, you know, I enjoy doing all of this stuff. But then on top of that, being locked down on my own in the house um, with this little one. But still, it's just, it was too much and it broke me and I just had to cancel everything. Um, but I'm feeling a lot better now. Summer's picked me up. We're allowed to see people now in England. I've been, you know, meeting loads of people outside. I managed to get sunburned a few times. Wear sun cream. But yeah, anyway. So hopefully Turf Force can be back on. Hopefully I can do it next week too. We'll see. But look out for it. I think it'll be good. So uh, the last thing we're going to do is look at some of these mailbox items because I'm really excited to see them. I'm sorry if this isn't a very exciting part of the show. Please let me know if it's kind of rubbish or lame. Like, I don't want it to be like really self-indulgent, but I'm, I don't know. People were saying like, oh, do you have a peer box? And I thought, well, it could be fun to open them on camera. People who have sent things in might want to see it. Maybe I could do a separate like live stream of opening them or I could just open them on my own and say thanks on Twitter. I don't know. Let me know because I'll, I'll be interested. Um, but let's just look at things. I only have five things. So it's not going to take forever. Uh, but the first one is this. <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> um, let's find out. So it's, it's an interesting thing to get. Oh, it's going to be really noisy. For the... uh, is it like a hula hoop? I was wondering if it's a hula hoop. I think it actually is a hula hoop. Um, thank you for whoever sent <laughs> hula hoop. I don't quite know why, but um, it's interesting. It's pretty colours. I'll have to, I'll try and do some hula hooping and I'll see if I can upload a video. Um, thank you for the hula hoop, whoever sent that. Interesting. Um, So now I've got this, I've got a, they, so it's got my PO box address on it and they've, uh, I probably should have just double checked that I didn't share anything important there. I might have to blur it. No, I just had my PO box address and that's all fine. Anyway, let's see what this one is. Thank you to whoever sent this. Maybe we'll find out. Um, this is a, it's an interesting experience. I don't know what it's going to be like. Oh. has a wax seal. That's pretty fancy. Gosh, I don't want to open it. I don't want to break it. I hope this isn't like super personal. It seems really like special. If this is like a handwritten letter, I'm not going to read it out because it might be like, well, I, I feel like I need to take a photo of this wax seal before, um, before I ruin it. I don't know how to open it. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell the envelope so I don't ruin the seal. Never got a wax seal before. That's really interesting. <clears throat> it's got a fancy letter. It says, "Consider this a love letter from your secret admirer." Oh, <laughs> thank you, secret admirer. Um, I've got this one. Uh, I didn't want to accidentally like show something I shouldn't show. What is this? Katie and Lizzie, the tale of two cats. Oh, that's green there, by the way. It's always disappeared. Um, oh. Thank you. I'll have a look at that later. That looks really nice because <laughs> it's got my name. Um, penultimate one. Sorry, everyone. Um, I hope this isn't too rubbish. <laughs> I can edit it out if everyone hates it. Um, so this one, I'm using my, uh, my mum made me this. So I thought you were around there. That's why we're around. Um, maybe this bottle in there with like a laser cutter thing. Christmas. So I'm using that to open it. 
boys in here. Oh! Is that chocolate? Um, okay, let's open the next layer. So it's got like a... If it is chocolate, I think I know who it's from. Because someone said they might have got chocolates. Oh, what is this? Oh, ah, yeah, I do know who this is from. Thank you very much. I'll send you a message on Twitter. So they've got me. I think it's like a Groot um, flower pot, I think. That you can put like flowers in there and I think some chocolates, which is really exciting. Thank you very much. That would, I'll definitely have to come up with a plant to go in there and I'll eat them whether they're chocolate or not. And it's got like a, a little one key ring. I've only actually seen the first one of those films, so perhaps I should watch the second one in case it's relevant to that. And then the last parcel is this cool box from Ireland. So an actual international parcel so thank you very much for sending that it's very kind um it looks like they might have opened it i guess it's for like customs or whatever now that they're not in the same like zone as ireland <gasps> it's a bulbasaur oh amazing thank you very much an apple caffeine free tea and then a letter as well I also won't read this out just in case oh, there's quite a lot of writing there I'll, I'll read that later because it won't be exciting for you to watch oh thank you no oh. oh, I'm so excited to get a Bulbasaur thank you very much <laughs> thank you everyone thank you for sitting through me opening like presents I, I don't know <laughs> that wasn't too weird do tell me if that was rubbish um Thank you very much. Thank you. I noticed some people sending super chats. Um, like, thank you so much. I, you know, I, I don't deserve it. Thank you for, um, you know, your support. I really appreciate it. Thanks everyone for coming watching Turf Wars again. Uh, hopefully we'll be back next week. Um, I really appreciate you all and we'll just keep fighting through this gender critical bullshit. The last two court cases actually went quite well for us. Uh, there was another one today. I don't think it was very major. I think there's another one coming. But like the gender criticals have been absolutely blowing money on trying to destroy as many trans rights with court cases as they can. Um, don't know. We'll see. But <clears throat> things are looking a lot better now. Or at least for me as a pessimist. Uh, people, things are looking a lot better now than they were six months ago when I was worrying about these things coming up. So, you know, we've got this. Um... See you soon.